Hey guys, I'm back with another Helena monologue and no less another Helena from All's Well That Ends Well monologue. So many Helenas. So to this, today's one is Till I Have No Wife, I Have Nothing in France. This is another fabulous monologue from Helena. She has got these amazing gut-wrenching monologues. It is pretty massive, so I'm going to dig into how to attack this and of course what everything means and your acting choices. So, uh, if, oh, and before I start, if you're interested in other Helena monologues, I will <laughs> link them below. So, let's have a look at what is happening here. She starts with, till I have no wife, I have nothing in France. What is this? Well, she's quoting directly from a letter that Bertram wrote her. So in this situation, let's go back a bit. I'm going to assume that you're not too familiar with All's Well That Ends Well because it's not that well known as a play. If you are, then skip ahead. That's fine. So in this situation, she is in love with Bertram. This is what's happened in basically the first half of the play. She is in love with Bertram and in order to win his heart, because she is a lowly servant girl sort of, well, you know, she's like a gentle, she's a helper around the place. She's a ward. Um, she has gone to the king who is sickly and she said, I am well versed in healing us. Let me heal you. So she goes and heals the king and her sort of bargain is, uh, if I heal you, can I choose whoever I want to marry? And the king says, yeah, go ahead. And she chooses Bertram and Bertram is less than thrilled about the situation. So he uh, bargains off to the wars. Uh, writes Helena a letter saying I'm not coming back and um, until I have no wife I have nothing in France so there's nothing because they're in France he doesn't want to stay in France is what he's saying and he writes another one to his mum saying well I've sent her back to you and you can deal with her and his mum's like you are a little bugger uh, so even his mum is not impressed with him at this time so he's a bit of a jerk but Yet, Helena is not thinking, oh my goodness, what a jerk. She's going, oh my goodness, what have I done? So that's where Helena's at right now. She's blaming herself for this guy being such a jerk. So this is a soliloquy. There's no one on stage. She has just come back home and said to the countess, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And the countess is like, well, guess what? I'm going to support you because I'm going to just pretend I'm going to disown my son. I'm going to have you instead as my child. So that's good, but she's also worried about Bertram. So she's by, by herself on stage and it's quite a reflective monologue. So you might choose, um, as is the case in soliloquies, you can talk to the audience. Usually this is, you can do that. Um, but you might decide that this is quite a reflective monologue and actually she's just kind of thinking to herself. Again, as always, make sure you think about your eye line when you're thinking to yourself because often we look down. Let's break down, what is she talking about? So she starts by going, till I have no wife, I have nothing in France. Already, you might be thinking uh, she's referring to the letter, so you might even decide that you want a prop letter to hold on to. If you're a very proppy actor, that might help you out. Then she reflects on what he said. Nothing in France until he has no wife. Like, good God, that's a real moment of like, oh my goodness, he said that. Like, he doesn't even want to, until I am gone, until I am not his wife anymore, he doesn't even want to be in his home. Uh, he doesn't want his... Uh, family or his wealth or anything he, he he's gonna give all that up because he doesn't want to be with me so these are big reflections like big moments of thinking about for you as an actor you might want to think about well how does she feel about that is she embarrassed is she does she feel is it mostly guilt all those kinds of things then she's made a decision or she's thinking aloud rather I think she makes a decision a little bit later on I'll, I'll dig into what I mean here. Thou shalt have none, Resilient, none in France, then hast thou all again. So she's saying, all right, well, I'll just go. Then you'll get everything back. Poor Lord, it's I that chase thee from thy country and expose those tender limbs of thine to the event of the nun sparing war. So she's saying, is it, did I do this? I, I'm chasing you out of here and sending you to war? And is it I that drive thee from the sportive court where thou was shot at with fair eyes to be the mark of smoky muskets? Uh, so again, she's just saying, is it, is it me doing this? So what you need to do here is make sure you're getting some variety. I'm not doing a great job of giving you variety, but this is a reading and not a performance. So you can think about that. So she, firstly saying, is it I that chased thee from thy country? So I've pushed you out to war and then... I've sent you away from the sportive court means like the 
you know, all the fun and the joy and everything. Um, and she's, she makes a comparison here. So when you have an antithesis in Shakespeare, so basically when she's setting, setting up opposites that she does, um, sportive court versus, oh, sorry, fair eyes, shot out with fair eyes to be the mark of smoky muskets. So fair being bright. And um, so shot out with fair eyes means like, ladies were all like, oh. and also, it can, mostly it would mean like the lady's looking at him, but it could also be that he's looked upon favorably by other members of the court and the king. Um, to be the mark of smoky muskets, so comparing this light, bright, uh, joyful court situation where he's got everything going for him to be the mark of smoky muskets, so now he's going to be shot at, literally, instead of being shot at with, uh, you know, looks. Next, this is where she really digs in and it is guttural, it connects. So really make sure you're connecting because she starts with O and when there's an O, actually it should be like, oh, you know, it actually should be like a guttural noise whenever you have O in Shakespeare. And we've talked about that before, if you've seen my other videos. Oh, you leaden messengers that ride upon the violent speed of fire, fly with false aim, move the still piercing air that sings with piercing, do not touch my lord. So that is a prayer to bullets, basically. So you leaden messengers being bullets that ride upon the violent speed of fire. So hopefully that's fairly straightforward. Um, fly with false aim being miss him. Um, move the still piercing piercing air that sings with piercing. So basically, um, you know, shoot through the air, miss him and chop through the air that and sings with piercing is referring to the like the <laughs> like the bullet noise. Um, do not touch my lord. Fairly straightforward. So that has got to be like you are praying pretty much to those bullets. And now this is when she really starts to, I I think, really feel that like Oh, good God, what have I done? And she says, whoever shoots at him, I set him there. Oh. See, this is the magic of Shakespeare. As I start saying it, I immediately connect to it. So hopefully you experience that as well. As soon as you start saying, oh, you leaden messengers and really opening up, you probably find that you start to naturally connect to the breath and that's where the emotion can be accessed. And then when you start to say, whoever shoots at him, I set him there. What she's saying there is like, if someone's shooting at him, I basically put him in front of that gun. Whoever charges on his forward breath, so thinking obviously about the old... um. What are they called thingies so they uh, had knives on the end of their guns I'm so sorry I've forgotten all these things um, whoever charges on his forward breast I am the caitiff that do hold him to it now caitiff usually means like it's a rude word so it's like jerk but worse so um, I I am the idiot I am the horrible person that is holding him there against that knife and though I kill him not I am the cause his death was so affected so she's just thinking already, she's like, I have sent him to death and this is my fault. Good Lord, that's a lot to put on stage. And you have, you don't even have to do anything. Just connect to that breath and let it fly and you will be there. I, well, I think anyway, if you understand what she's saying, if you can imagine like you have sent someone you love off to war. Now she's sort of, now she's thinking that this in the middle of a line, she's thinking, she has a change, slight change of thought. She's connecting like, oh, well, better it were me is the next kind of thought. It's in the middle of the line though, so you can't take a big, because when things happen in the middle of a line, you cannot take a big pause to be like, mm -hmm, you know, connecting my thoughts. You have to be straight away. So she's talking about, I put him there. And then immediately, better it were, I, I met the, sorry, I better get it right. Bet it were, I met the raven lion when he roared with sharp constraint of hunger. So she's saying, better it were me. Better I, uh, if I leave, maybe I will go into the forest and there'll be a lion because that's what seems to happen in Shakespeare. There seems to be lions everywhere. I don't know. Um, better that I, I roam and a lion comes and finds me. Um, a starving lion, no less. Bet it were that all the miseries which nature owes were mine at once. So everything, anything that you've got in store for me, better that I meet famine and flood and disease and probably rape and all those things, sorry. Um, better that that happened to me than he die. That's how she feels. That's like, and that's genuine. That's not a, that's not lip service. 
<coughs> no, and that this is where I think she really makes the decision. So she's already kind of said, well, I'll just go then, but it's not really fully formed. And now she says, no, come thou home, Rosillian. When, when oh, sorry, this bit, I always find a little bit fiddly because it's sort of like she's made a decision and then she kind of starts reflecting again and honestly sometimes I cut this if I'm doing it in an audition which is a bit rough but it does become quite a long monologue so well if you've got ways to really get around this bit and you've found a really good way to do it please drop it in the comments because I'd love to hear it so what she says no come thou home resilient whence honor but of danger wins a scar as oft it loses all I will be gone so she's saying over there um you're more like you're as likely to die as you are to just get a scar. Um, and so I'm gonna go. My being here it is that holds thee hence. Shall I stay to do it? So, you know, I, feel like, I think that's fairly straightforward. So if I'm here, that keeps you over there. Um, am I gonna stay? And so again, this is the bit where she's sort of like going, mm, should, I, should I go? Is she maybe doubting herself? But you can actually play it as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be doubting herself. It could actually just be like, she's it's more like a rhetorical question like shall I stay no that's ridiculous so and so I feel like I'm solving problems as we go do you feel like that I hope so uh so I will be gone my being here it is that holds thee hence shall I stay to do it no no although and this is where she starts to remember that she had a moment of bliss for a month for just not long for like a day when she got to marry Bertram, so she did actually marry Bertram, I'm sorry, I didn't explain that, so she actually married Bertram. Um, the air of paradise did fan the house and angels officed all, so basically like it felt like heaven. I will be gone. So because she repeats, I will be gone, I actually sometimes just cut a little bit out there and so she only says it once, that's how I would cut it, just so you're getting kind of the rhythm still the same. So you just kind of skip from the first I will be gone to like this I will be gone. And that kind of misses that the moment where she's like, oh, but everything was, was so beautiful for a second. Um, which is fine, you can still, um, it, it doesn't really matter because what happens in the shape of a monologue is that she kind of, um, She's, reflect, she's reflecting on things and then she realizes, oh, I've sent him to war. And then she kind of does that big prayer moment. And then she's like, oh my God, I did this better, it were me. Um, and then she's like, I'm definitely gonna go. And then it gets to the air of paradise and that's kind of bringing it back to that sadness. Now it could be a, a lower energy moment for you if you, it could be a despair. Although, or you could, um, you could choose for it to be like, well, even though everything was amazing, I'm going to go. So you could still play it as like completely resolved or you could play it as she's doubting herself. So that's what kind of happens at the end of this monologue, which can be a little bit tricky. So be really clear about your choices. Um, make sure you understand for yourself, making your own decisions about when am I fully resolved as Helena? When have I decided, yes, I'm definitely going. And it definitely has to come by the end because she says that pitiful rumor may report my flight to consolate thine ear. So basically her plan is I'm going to go. And interestingly, it kind of ties in depending on your addition, the punctuation might be different. Um, so you can actually do it as I will be gone. That pitiful rumor may report my flight to consolate thine ear. So I'll be gone and rumor will get to you that I'm gone and that will make you feel better. And then you'll come better. You come back. Um, sometimes I will be gone is the end of a sentence and that pitiful rumor is like a new thing. All these decisions, you, know, you can make that decision on your own, but ultimately that's kind of a little, it doesn't change too much. So I, I wouldn't overthink that. So let's get to the end of it. Come night, end day, for with the dark, poor thief, I'll steal away. So basically, of course, um, in Shakespeare, as in life, I suppose, people only ever run away at night time. They don't run away during the day, so you have to wait till night time. Um, so come, na come night, end day, for with the dark, poor thief, I'll steal away. So she's a thief. She's kind of a thief of love, and she's also referring, because she's stealing away. It's a little wordplay there. So, another Helena monologue, hey? Okay? How many can we have? Please uh, drop me a question if you've got questions about Helena or about any um, other 
other Shakespeare things, let me know if there are other monologues you want me to do. Please do like the video if um, and subscribe if you liked it, if you found it helpful, because it helps me get out to more people. Um, and I love sharing these with people. Uh, let me know if there are other monologues you'd like me to do or other plays or other characters. I've started doing some different character analysis videos as well. So that can, I'll probably do a Helena one of those pretty soon. And that's it. I hope you enjoy that one. It's such a cracker. I love it. All right. I'll see you guys next time.